Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and I hope you guys are doing well. Today we will discuss plate tectonic theory. Now plate tectonic theory is one of the three most important theories explaining how different structures are formed on the surface of the earth. In fact, it is the most accurate theory and it is the theory which is even currently accepted for the regions of earthquakes and volcano formations on the surface of our earth. So let's just have a quick recap what we have discussed in our last videos. So we started with continental drift theory in which we have seen that Wagner said that the continents are moving over the sea flow. However, he failed to give a mechanism for this movement and which is why his theory got rejected. Later on, in 1929, Arthur Holmes came up with convection current theory where he explained that, they, that there lies a convection current within the mantle. And it is because of this convection current, the continents move. Further, in 1943, we got sonar technology in which sound beams are sent towards the seafloor and the time it takes for these beams to come back to the ship is calculated and through which we can determine the depth of seafloor. This technology helped Mary Thapar to develop a first map of her ocean floors across the world. Now, this led to a very new development about the structure of sea floor. After these maps, we were able to find that in the middle of the sea floor, there is a long chain of mountains and at the sides, there are trenches. And even in this long chain of mountains in the middle of the oceans, there is a rift valley, which we can see here. So this was a major development in 1950s. Using this map of Mary Thapa, we got sea floor spreading theory, which was given by Harry Hess in 1962 in which he explained a mechanism that how these kind of structures are formed at the seafloor, how this mid-oceanic ridge is formed, the, uh, the magma which comes from the convection current, it produces new seafloor over here and as the seafloor moves like a conveyor belt, it reaches at the edges of our seafloor and then it subducts in the asthenosphere. So this was the whole mechanism which was given by Harry Hess for how these structures are formed and how our seafloor is uh, formed continuously at the mid oceanic ridge and it is destroyed at the trenches. Later on, from 1965 to 1968, we got plate tectonic theory. Now, this theory was not developed by one single person, but there was a series of papers which were published related to this theory. However, the major contribution came from Mackenzie Parker, who worked together, and Morgan, who worked independently, and they developed a model. A mathematical model was developed which explained all the movements or all the forces which were causing this movement of the continents. And that is why if we see all these theories that we have seen so far, all these theories were basically observational theories which mean that they were based on observations. That is you observed a structure in the middle of the ocean and you gave a hypothesis. There was no mathematical formulation or any such explanations given for this. But when we come to plate tectonic theory, we see that a mathematical model was developed. And that is why this was very accurate compared to all other theories which came before it. And it is because of this reason, this theory is still accepted. Now let's discuss what is plate tectonic theory. Now, before we see what is plate tectonic theory, we need to understand it, what is a plate. For that, we must understand what is a lithosphere. So if we see the cross section of our earth, we will see that there lies our crust that is continental crust as well as oceanic crust. And then we have mantle, the outer mantle, which can be divided into two parts. This is the outer mantle, which is solid. And this is the uh, outer mantle, which is in plastic state, that is, it is in semi-solid state. So lithosphere is basically the solid part of our out, outer mantle and the crust both continental crust as well as oceanic crust. So we can see that the lithosphere is all part of our earth that is above this asthenosphere. And basically our litho lithosphere, it slides or it moves over this asthenosphere because, because asthenosphere is in semi-solid state or plastic state which allows the lithosphere to slide above it. So here you can see that this is the highlighted region and all the region that is highlighted is our lithosphere. Now we have seen that lithosphere consists of 
outer mantle which is solid and our crust. So it is everything above asthenosphere. So we can see that lithosphere is divided into different parts and each of this part is called a plate. So you can see here that all of our lithosphere is divided into several plates. Some of them are bigger parts which are called major plates while some are very small. So these are called minor plates. So if we see these boundaries exist all around our earth and along these boundaries there are some movements. All these plates move with respect to each other. They move in different directions and by these arrows we can see that the direction in which these plates are moving. Here you can see that this plate is moving in this direction. While here you can see that this plate is moving in this direction. So basically at each boundary there is a relative movement of plates. So based on the relative movement of plates at these boundaries, we can divide the boundaries into three types. You can see that now the boundaries are in three colors and each of these color means something. We can see here that the red color means converging boundaries or convergent boundaries. So at the red margins, we see that two plates are moving towards each other. The green line indicates transform boundary. So basically, this is the boundary where two plates are moving parallel to each other. While the third one is that is the yellow color is divergent boundaries. We can see along the mid oceanic ridges. So basically, these are the boundaries where two plates are moving away from each other. Now, here are the names of our major plates. That is North American plate, Eurasian plate, African plate, South American plate, Pacific plate, Antarctic plate, Indo-Australian plate. And in this slide, you can see the name of minor plates as well, where there is a Caribbean plate, there's Cocos plate, then there is Nagza plate, Scotia plate, and you can see Philippines plate here, uh, Sunda plate. So there are major plates as well as there are minor plates. There are several other plates which we have not shown in this diagram. Now at these plate margins, we can see that there are a lot of tectonic activities. There are a lot of earthquakes. So if you see this diagram, we have plotted all the earthquakes in the world and we can see that most of the earthquakes, in fact, 90 to 95% of the earthquakes are concentrated on these boundaries. In fact, at the converging boundaries, we see most of the earthquakes and in fact, deep earthquakes and intermediate earthquakes are mainly focused on the converging boundaries. So you can see here that here there is a red margin that is the converging boundary and we can see that most of the earthquakes that is deep seated earthquakes as well as the intermediate earthquakes occur over here. And at our mid oceanic ridges, which is the yellow line, which is the diverging boundary, we see that there are low or shallow seated earthquakes or shallow earthquakes that is earthquakes which do not occur at much depth. Similarly, if you see the volcano map in our world, then we can see that most of the volcanoes are concentrated on the converging boundary line that is the red colored boundary line. We can see it on both sides of our map. So we can conclude from here that our boundary plates are tectonically very active. And most of the earthquakes and volcanisms occur on these boundaries. Now what is the force which causes the movements of these plates? We have already seen Arthur Holmes theory where he said that there are radioactive elements in our mantle and these radioactive elements release heat. This heat when concentrated together and increases in a certain amount then it will cause melting of the rocks in the mantle as you can see here. Now these molten rocks they are buoyant and they start to rise up. When they reach the asthenosphere, they start to move horizontally because they are not able to move up. So they start to move horizontally in both directions. And then when they cool down, they will start sinking in the mantle again and come back here. So this kind of convection current is there in our mantle. And it is because of this, the lithosphere moves on this convection current. Now we have already seen that there exists three types of boundaries based on the movement of the plates at these boundaries. The first one is convergent boundaries where two plates move towards each other. The second is the divergent boundary where two plates move away from each other. And third is the transform boundary where two plates move parallel to each other. Now these plates can be further classified into different types. 
There is a separate video in which we have discussed each of these boundaries in very much detail about how different structures are formed at these boundaries. Here we will just have a quick overview that what structures exist in each of these boundaries. So first is our convergent boundary where we have oceanic oceanic convergent boundary. We see that this is oceanic plate, this is oceanic plate and the heavier oceanic plate is subducting and as it subducts due to friction we see that magma is formed and this magma comes to the surface and it forms volcanic island arcs. So at these ocean ocean convergent boundaries we have a lot of volcanic island arcs. Now if we have to look at an example of ocean ocean convergent boundary then we can see at Marina Trench where two oceanic plates the Marina plate which is a minor plate and the Pacific plate which is a major plate are interacting here the Pacific plate is subducting under the Marina plate and it is forming Marina Trench. This trench has the deepest point on our earth. Now here we have continent ocean convergent boundary where we see that the oceanic plate is subducting under a continental plate and because of friction we see formation of magma. This magma rises to the surface and we see formation of volcanic mountains. Our Andes mountains are actually an example of this kind of subduction. We can see here that the Nexa plate is subducting under the South, of, South American plate and we see that there is a trench formed over here which is Peru Chile uh, trench and we see that the Andes mountains is formed because of this and that is why we have a lot of volcanism within this Andes mountains because this subduction still continues. It, this is a life trench and the Nexa plate continues to subduct under the South American plate. In fact, in our Indian Ocean, if we see, then our Indo-Australian plate is subducting under the Eurasian plate. And we see the formation of Sunda Trench, which is also called, called as Java Trench. So here, our Indian plate or Indo-Australian plate is subducting under the Eurasian plate. Next is continent-continent convergent boundary. Here, what happens is that two continental plates are moving towards each other. And we see a lot of fold mountains are formed over here and we also see that the continental crust of this plate is not subducting it is the mental part which is subducting the continental crust is actually getting under the continental crust of other plate and just causing the thickening of our crust so the crust never subducts because it is lighter or it is less denser than the asthenosphere our himalayas is the best example for continent continent convergent boundary here our indo-australian plate is subducting under the eurasian plate and we can see a long chain of mountains right till else mountain so this whole area is basically a continent continent convergent boundary the arabian plate is subducting under the eurasian plate and it forms these mountains the african plate is subducting under the eurasian plate and we see a chain of mountains over here now let's see divergent boundaries. The first is ocean ocean divergent boundary. Here we see that there are two plates which are oceanic plates and they are moving away from each other. Now because they are moving away from each other, we see a mid oceanic ridge where there are long chain of mountains separated by a rift valley. The Atlantic ocean mid oceanic ridge is the best example for ocean ocean divergent boundary where we can see a mid oceanic ridge in the middle of Atlantic ocean. Then we come to ocean continent divergent boundary. Now these kind of boundaries are not found because very soon this kind of boundary gets converted into ocean ocean divergent boundary because when the continent starts to move away, new oceanic floor will be formed and this will be a ocean ocean divergent boundary. The third is continent continent divergent boundary. Here we see that two continents or two continental plates are moving away from each other and when they move away from each other they form a rift valley. The best example for this is African rift valley where we see that this part of the African plate is moving away it is breaking down and a rift valley is formed across these lines we can see here. The last type of boundary is transform boundary where we can see that two plates it could be oceanic plate or continental plate and they are moving in parallel directions like this. 
So they are not moving towards each other, they are not moving away from each other, but they are just sliding against each other. Our San Andreas Fault is the best example for this kind of boundary. Here you can see a San Andreas Fault is located in the west of America. And you can see the effect of a transform boundary where this plate is moving in this direction while this plate is moving in this direction. There is another type of transform boundary which is formed along the mid oceanic ridges. So in this diagram you can see that the yellow line indicates the mid oceanic ridge. And in between these mid oceanic ridges we can see transform boundaries. This, yellow, this red line indicates transform boundaries and these kind of boundaries are formed throughout the mid oceanic ridge. If we see this diagram we can see that there is a mid oceanic ridge in the center which is indicated by yellow line. And these red lines, they indicate the transform boundary. So we can see that there are a lot of transform boundaries all across this mid oceanic ridge. Thank you friends. If you like this video, then please subscribe and share this video. We are going to present videos on all of the topics relevant for geography. So do subscribe and share our channel with your friends. Thank you.